What is rolling everybody? You're watching a brand new video here from Car Boot Collectors. I'm your host, JM, and today we're going to be doing another eBay action figure unboxing haul video. Although it's not really an unboxing because I've already unboxed it. What are you going to do about it? Uh, so yeah, very similar to my last video. This is just a lot of stuff which came from eBay. I believe this is what the guy did specifically say in the description. is like he um, sells at conventions. Uh, and they're not on this year, so he's just like, I'm just clearing out my crap. It's all a job lot. Probably not going to go for very much money. Please just buy it. Get it out of my hands. Um, and that I was glad to. So I, I won. He had a few lots available. I won a couple of them, and I didn't pay very much money for this. Like, it was a bloody good deal, to be completely honest. Um, some really nice stuff. It's a real random mix. We've got a little bit of everything, you know, some Star Wars, some Doctor Who, some whatever these are. Egg bobs. Uh, there's a little bit of everything. Some transformers. So there's some good sort of you know like staple, staple thing like Star Wars transformers. And there's some more obscure stuff as well, which is the, the more the sort of thing I like to go for, just because no one else has really got it available. So I like to go for the more uh, more unusual lines of figures. So uh, yeah, very hard to show this lot. So about 25 bits all together. So hopefully it won't be too long of a video. Uh, so there you go. Now I'm going to say, someone commented on the last video I did and was like, it's too dark, turn a light on. And I have turned the light on. It comes out worse because it seems to throw the, the sort of the balance off. It's now even more fuzzy. It's not particularly late. I'm filming this. It's like six o'clock. It's still really sunny. So I think I'm going to turn the light off just because it's going to be even more fuzzy with it on. Um, it's not so much an issue of the light. I don't think it's just the ca I'm filming this on my webcam, which is not, no, not the best. Uh, I'm going to be getting a new camera soon, though. So when the time comes, the video quality is going to be upgraded. But for the meantime, you know, I could set up my camera, microphone. It's a lot of effort, though, just for, for this video. Which, you know, it's probably going to get like 100 views. So for the time being, I'm just going to do it in low quality. You know, if you want to watch it, do it. If you don't, then bloody go and watch something else. But it's not going to be as entertaining as this. So I guarantee you that. So let's uh, turn the light off. There you go. See, it comes out a little better. It comes out a little crisper. Uh, so there you go. You can see my SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom rolling in the background there. Just as something to have on the TV. Um, not not the best thing to do, really, because it comes out like a bit fuzzy. There's no point of it being there, really. But it's better than a big old TV. So anyway, let's go. I almost forgot. We've got a beer review rolling as well. Um, as I said in my last video, I want to do some incorporate some beer reviews into my hauls as well. Um, so this is what I got from M&S, as I mentioned. I went down there uh, to M&S. I felt very out of place when I went there. You know, and amongst all of the you know, sort of posh old ladies with the little bloody wheels, trolleys. Um, but I went down there and I picked out a couple of brews, which sounded interesting. We got this one today. Belgian cherry wheat beer, brewed exclusively for Marks and Spencer by the huge brewery Belgium. So a blend of Belgian wheat beer and juice pressed from... Grit up cherries. That's not how you say it. What are you going to do? Um, so, yeah, this sounded very interesting. I've never heard of this before, so I just thought it sounded interesting. I wanted to try something new, so that's what I went for. I don't actually know what the... It's 3.5% volume, so it's not too bad for a sort of a, one of those kind of brews, a little sort of novelty brew, shall we call it. It's not, not really a novelty brew, though. Um, so, yeah, I've already poured it out into air. It bloody stinks of cherry. The whole room smells of cherry. It's very strong. I'm cheating a bit because I've already tried it. This is like the third take of doing this video, but it's very crisp. It's a really nice summer beverage. It's, it's got, um, you know, it's very, you know, the beer, the beer taste in this is very subtle. You just get, it's a very strong, sweet cherry, um, but it's very nice. You know, very, very good. Well recommended, but it does come with a cost. It's like £2.50. It's a little tiny bloody bottle, but, you know, as I said, I wanted to try something new. And that's the cost for doing that. Um, but it's very nice. So well recommended. There you go. And the old the old tankard. Classic stuff. So uh, anyway, we're nearly five minutes into the video. I have not shown a single figure yet. So let's get on with showing some bloody figures, which you're all here for. So anyway, let's start off with something pretty nifty. Let's start off with this, just because it's its own thing, I suppose. Some things, so I've got two or three figures from the same range. This is just the same thing. So we've got a South Park wind-up set. Pretty cool. I've never had this one before. They released this a lot of different times. 
uh, with different packaging. I've had the one many times before, which doesn't include Chef. It just comes with the four main characters. It comes on more of like a card back. It's got a card up here. My um, didn't check it before, and the uh, laptop is about to run out of power. Let's just plug her, plug her in. There we go. Sorted. I don't knocked it out, sorted, I digress. Anyway, so I've had this one many times before, not this specific variation, but the one without Chef. Um, this one I think is slightly more valuable. It's not worth a whole lot of money. It's about 20 quid, 25 quid. Um, South Park memorabilia is quite well collected, uh, but it doesn't hold a whole lot of value. I mean, at least this this, this doesn't. Um, but if you if you like South Park, you want a nice collectible. This is a cool thing, you know, you get all the characters, it's a nice sort of display box. Um, so yeah, quite a nice thing there. South Park wind up set. There it is. Uh, next up, we've got a couple of Star Wars Attack of the Clones figures. Uh, these are pretty nostalgic for me. These are like the era of when I was sort of like really into Star Wars. These like blue packaging uh, with the lightsaber design at the top there. Um, these are really like to me really nostalgic. I had I didn't have Anakin, but I did have the Obi Wan of this style, the Force flipping attack. And I've got to be honest, it was absolute shite. Um, the idea of these is you can see it better on the back. You stick him on this little flipper thing and he's got magnets in his feet and he flips over onto this magnetic disc. Never works. It does not work very well. Uh, we've got Anakin there and then we've got another one of the sort of deluxe range. We've got a clone trooper with a speeder bike. Um, so he's pretty nifty. That's a pretty cool figure. He comes with like removable armour. Um, Apologise, I say already it's fuzzy. It's just the camera. It's not the light. There's not a lot I can do for the moment. We will upgrade soon though, so stay tuned. But there you go, those two. Um, not the most desirable figures. Uh, the packaging, they're not in very good nick. They're quite torn up. Um, and when I get these in bad condition, sometimes it's easier to crack them out the box. Um, it just it just is sometimes because you know there's plenty of these available on mint, you know, case fresh cards. Uh, so sometimes it is easier just to sell them as loose figures. You know? They're in like perfect condition. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'll do with those yet. I think that one's about a £20 figure, £25, so that one's probably about a tenner. Um, I might even crack it open and have a little gander at it, just for fun, because as I said, I did have the Obi-Wan one back in the day, and it was, you know, could never get it to work. So that's those two. Um, next up we've got this. I'm not familiar with this. I haven't done any research on it. I have not a clue what it is. It looks like the sort of thing you find in Poundland, so I don't think it's anything that exciting. But it is a Blobbermull. Melting monster sounds pretty cool. Sort of sounds nifty, I suppose. Uh, you get these little plastic bits, and there's some like slime stuff in there. It looks pretty disgusting. Uh, so there's that. I say I don't think it's it's not very old. It is made by a company called The Source from a Hull. No idea. Some some generic garbage. Probably uh, probably worth absolutely nothing. But it was in in the lot. Uh, next up, some stuff of slightly better value. Um, now, I don't collect these. I've never, I've never collected Transformers. They don't interest me at all. I had some back in the day, and they just annoyed me because they're so hard to put together, and they just didn't. They're not really my thing. Uh, but it always amazes me with modern Transformers how much they increase in value so quickly. Um, I've had some of these before, loose, like loose mint complete, and uh, some of them go for insane money. I mean, I know they're quite expensive to begin with. I think it's like. 10, 12, 15 quid. Uh, but these two are both sort of like £30 figures. Bumblebee, I think it might be a little more. Uh, but yeah, these are from the 2007 movie, which I have never watched, never going to, hopefully. Uh, we've got Bumblebee there, almost forgot his name. And then we've got Scorponok, who's like a big scorpion thing. So uh, that's those. Two. Those are in very nice condition. As I say, pretty um, fairly desirable figures. Should be quite an easy sell. Um, with these sort of things, you know, it's hard to find them in the packet with some of these newer things. You think, being that they're not even that old, they'd be quite easy to find in the, like sealed. But some some newer figures are like really hard to find for whatever reason. But there you go, Transformers. Uh, next up, we'll go with some of the more random stuff, uh, which I've stacked over here, so it's a bit awkward to get to. Um, let's have another bit of the brew. I'm craving it. It's, it's warm. It's perfect weather for a brew. Very sweet, very sweet indeed. Very good though, very good. Let's notice as well, these annoy me. 
these curls that come out. Um, that's why I'm wearing a hat indoors. Which I'm pretty certain is not recommended, but it annoys me. I don't know why they stick out. It looks like, um, don't know, something. Uh, but the problem is I either have it on and I look like Michael Moore, or I take it off and I look like Dave Clark. So it doesn't really matter. It's better just to keep it on, I suppose, for the time being. It's going to be cut soon, so it's not a problemo. Uh, anyway, digress. Let's get on with the figures. So next up, we've got one here. This is from the Lost in Space movie. We have got Major Don West. Never seen the film before. I know it's not supposed to be very good. Um, the toys for it are not that desirable. Um, I know a couple of them are. I know some of the robots are fairly sought after. As far as I'm aware, the human characters aren't too expensive. Um, don't see them about very often, but just not a lot of people after them. Uh, this one is not in the best condition. The bubble's very yellowed. And when they go yellow, they're very easily damaged. You, can, you can't really see it, but you can hear it there. It's got a big fat crack on the corner. Uh, so, you know, it'd be ideal if you wanted one to open, you know, you'd have a mint loose figure with all the little accessories, but there he is, Major Don West, so I've never seen the film, not too familiar with it. Uh, also something I'm not too familiar with is this right here, this is Babylon 5, not a clue what it's about. I know that it's some like early 2000s space thing that was very popular. I've seen the figures about before, I've had a couple of them in the past, and they're really nice figures, they're really nice quality, I don't know who made them. Warner Brothers Toys, apparently, and it's from 1997. Um, so yeah, this is a character called Ver Cotto, with a heavy warship from Centauri Republic. It just looks like a man with a, a fan on his head, I don't know. Uh, but there he is, nice figure, not particularly designed, it's like 15 quid on card, uh, but very nifty. I so I don't know a lot about this, these sort of old sci-fi shows don't really appeal to me, like Babylon 5 and... Battlestar Galactica and Stargate, they all look like just, you know, a bunch of people running around on a spaceship, there's some prosthetics, like, guys with them disgusting spots all over, you know, that's what it is, that's early 2000s sci-fi in a nutshell, doesn't appeal to me, but there he is, guy from Babylon 5, sorted, nice little uh, figure if you, if you know who he is. Um, next up, now we've got two of these guys here, now... Someone on my last video said, the very first comment on it was like, you always find a way to mention Family Guy figures in your video, which I've never noticed before, but I suppose it's correct. Um, you know, it's, I'm not intentionally trying to shoehorn Family Guy figures into my videos, but it's just how it goes. And we've got a couple more here, so these came in a lot as well. It's actually how I found this lot, because I was just looking for Family Guy figures and don't, don't, don't collect them. Don't, don't really have a lot of interest in them. Buy lots of them when they're on the bay, but uh, I don't know why I was looking for them, but I was, and this lot came because of that. So it's pretty good, really. Uh, so we've got a Series 1 Chris. Uh, comes with the evil monkey, and he comes with a box of magazines. Um, the re-release of this figure, and he also comes with a Walkman. The re-release of this figure only comes with the monkey. So Series 1 variant is slightly more desirable, and he's in really nice condition. The cards with these because they're all jagged, um, hard to find in good condition. They can, quite often they're a bit dented up, but this one's really nice. Uh, they used to be worth quite a bit more. This this used to be, when I collected these anyway, this used to be like a 50, 60 pound figure. Uh, but now he's, you know, he's like 25, 30 quid, somewhere around there. Um, but yeah, really nice condition. If you wanted a really nice one, that's, that's a good one to get, I suppose. So there he is. I don't have too many Family Guy figures carded at the moment. I've, as I said in my last video, I've got a whole slew of loose ones at the moment because I just bought a big lot of them the other day but the boxed ones I don't find too often I've got that one and I've got it's the other one I've got them. I've got the salesman but it's the rarer variant so I don't find them on card too often but there you go we've got another one here as well I've only ever had this set once before and I traded it with back in the day toy so you probably you might still have it I'm not sure uh, but this is a really nifty set this is the Griffins mini box set so it's like the normal size figures, but scaled down, and you get the Griffin family in this sort of box set. Now, I'm pretty sure this set, that at least the one I, that I used to have that I traded with back in the day toys, 
I'm sure came with a whole bunch of accessories. So it's quite possible this might be a variant which I'm not familiar with. Um, and now to be fair that I compare it, it is in the like re-release packaging. So I've never actually seen this before. I didn't know they made a, a reissue of this set that doesn't include any accessories because it should come with, you know, like a beer can for Peter and Chris's like, I think the monkey and Meg comes with something and Stewie comes with something, I don't know, a load of stuff. But this is just the figures straight up on their own. So uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, 2009, so this is some kind of reissue. So I've never, never seen this pack before. Um, so there's that, family guy. Not very popular anymore, but occasionally people want to buy the figures. So what can you do? Uh, next up, we've got, we've only got a few more things now to be fair. Let's go with these. Uh, there's four of these here. I'm not familiar with these. I've never seen them before. I don't think they're too desirable. I couldn't find too many of them about for sale, but I think that's probably because no one bought them back in the day and I can't imagine anyone wants to buy them now. So these are Transformers Dark of the Moon egg bonds so they're like little egg shaped characters that wind up and they sort of walk along so we've got bumblebee there we've got optimus prime and we've got me oh, well, eggatron uh, that's funny because it's an egg uh yes yeah, so there's those egg bods that's the full set of these as i said i couldn't find too many of them available that is the full set of the transformer ones um i don't know if i'd keep them as a set or just do them individually i mean you probably have people out there that collect like Bumblebee memorabilia and would be obliged to buy that because it's Bumblebee. They probably wouldn't want to buy it, but they'd have to because it's Bumblebee. So it might be better for me to just do them individually, but I'd say not worth too much money. Probably if, you know, I don't know, 10 quid each, free postage probably. Maybe a, li maybe a little more. We'll see. Egg boys. We've got this one here. This is more a generic one. So this is a Crack Commando. He's a little soldier. I would assume that is probably of zero desirability to anybody, but egg bods, whatever they are, there, there's another one of them. Let's track them down there. Uh, we've only got, what is this, two, four, six? We've got seven more items to go, and most of them are the same range of figures, so it should be pretty quick. Next up is this. Now, this is really cool. I've never had any from this range before, boxed. Uh, we've got a Corgi Classics, James Bond collection, we've got Moon, the Moonraker ship with, is it Drax? Yeah, Hugo Drax. Um, really nice condition. And crack, if I crack the box open, you can see, still got, you know, someone's taken, oh, I say someone, I took it out earlier, it looks like someone had taken out anyway. There's a pube in the packet, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but yeah, really cool little set. I've had the figure a few times on his own. I don't know why, I always find the figures for these in basket condition in lots or just at the car boot. But uh, yeah, it's in really nice condition. It's not the most desirable one. It's probably about 20 quid. But that's pretty damn cool. I do like these. I, I used to collect the um, Corgi Classics Beetle set. Uh, and they're a very similar thing, very nice sort of thing to collect. You know, I had like you know the, the newspaper taxi and it comes with a little uh, ticket woman. And they do like the, the submarine and the figures and they're really nice things and they're really cool. Like if you're into James Bond, there's so many different ranges of die cast models to collect. And you've got like the Diego Steeny ones, I think it was, or is it Atlas? The ones that came with the magazines. Um, that's a nice set to collect. But but these are not these are nice because they're you know you get them all together, they're uniform in the packet, they come with the little figures. And they look really cool when you when you have a few of them. So Moonraker, pretty nifty. There it is. Uh, next up, let's go with these right here. These are probably some of the less desirable figures from this lot, but also maybe some of the best figures because I think these are really nice and they're underappreciated. These aren't worth too much money. But my prediction. I think these are going to start to pick up some value over the next few years, or, you know, at some point anyway, uh, just because they're really nice figures. The, you know, they don't have a lot of value. But anyway, they're Doctor Who, made by Character Options. So we've got a couple of them here. Uh, we've got David Tennant in his spacesuit, the original variant. They did, like, a million variations of this figure. Doctor in spacesuit, this dirty Doctor in spacesuit with a, a, a pot on a stand. Doctor in spacesuit with, like, I don't know, T tiny scar on his face and that's a separate figure you know, they did loads of them but that's the original pretty cool it's like an eight pound figure if that 
And then we've also got the Mox of Balhoon. Comes with his little spider droids. Uh, packaging is beat on this one. It's all creased up. The bubble is yellowed. Probably would struggle to sell this for a fiver. But it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. There he is, Mox of Balhoon. And there is a variation of this figure that is the earlier release. So the earlier release of these don't have the series tag on the top. So up here it's just, you know, plain. And the earlier Mox of Balhoon is a completely different figure. The base on it is like a really bright gold and the figure is like a really pale blue. Um, the earlier variant of it is, you know, not hard to find, but it's certainly different to this one. And you don't see them as often as the this one. So it's something to look out for if, if you want it, which I don't think many people really do, to be honest. But there you go, Mox Balhoon. To say, very... Um, very affordable these Doctor Who figures. If you wanted to collect these, you could build up a big collection of them for not very much money at all. I mean, if you bought these loose, you could buy both these figures loose. At most most toy fairs, there's usually people selling these, like, you know, two quid, three quid a figure. They really aren't that expensive. There's only certain figures, and then obviously the classic ones, which are more money, but most of them are very, very cheap. But, yeah, Doctor Who. I do, I do think, you know, someday, give, give it a few years, when they've, you know, people start to collect them, they will. Uh, I think these, I think these will be like a, a staple line of figures that people want. So yeah, character dog two, very like this, big fan, big fan. Used to collect those back in the day. Uh, then we'll end on these here. So we've got two, two figures from two separate ranges. So I've got two from Wale and two from Hitchhiker's Guide. There is a spider on me. What is this? It's only a little spider. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pan it too much, but it's. I was gonna try and get him onto this SpongeBob PS4 case and show you, but he's gone. I don't know where he's gone. It's like a really wiry spider. It looked like it was clear. Hopefully, that's nothing poisonous. But he's gone. That's really weird. I felt his. I felt his web bloody sling onto my arm, and then down there. Where is he gone? Don't know. Anyway, I digress. Very refreshing, very refreshing. Um, I've got four more figures to show, as I just said. Two of them are from Wally, and two of them are from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We'll go with the Wally ones first. Now, out of the whole lot, these two are probably the most valuable figures. These are really quite sought after. So we've got Mo, and we have got Search and Protect Eve. Uh, these figures are really expensive. Mo loose runs about twenty-five quid. Eve loose runs about 40, 50 quid with all the accessories. So, you know, carded, I'd probably value these bad boys, you know, 50 quid, 75. Maybe even closer to 100, to be honest, you know, on a, on a good day when someone really wants it. Uh, they're just hard figures to find on card. I find them quite often, I say quite often, I don't find them that often, to be completely honest, but when I do find them, they're usually unboxed with the accessories missing. But, and I've never had Mo before. But uh, yeah, these are quite um, very sought after figures. They're not that old either. What, what are these from? There's no date on the packet. Like probably 2009, 2010. They're certainly not that old. Uh, but very desirable, very desirable figures. And they were just in the lot. So that's pretty much what I bought that lot for, uh, for these two. Very cool. I'm sure there's some figures which are which are a little more sought after. Even There's a lot of Wallies in the set, different variants. You repair Wally, dance and tap Wally, Cuban stack Wally. So many Wallies, but only one Mo, only one Eve, I believe, maybe two. Um, fun fact about these: the Axiom Captain, who's just this like fat dude here. Uh, my local 99p store before it closed down, they had shelves of them. No one wanted them for months and months and months and months. They had just tons and tons of that figure. I don't think it's, I think out of all of them, that's like the least desirable. I think it's only worth about £10 sealed. But they had tons of them for years. Uh, yeah. I think I've probably still got one somewhere. But there you go. Axiom Captain Wally. Very cool. Very happy to find those. So, uh, yeah, you know, be on the lookout for those because they are sought after. You wouldn't necessarily think it if you saw them out and about, but you know, people are after them. Um, and then finally, last up, now these I'm the most excited about. These are cool. I've never, I've never had this set before. I've had all the others before. Um, these are from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The movie which came out is what two thousand seven, two thousand eight, 
2006. Again, there's no date on the packet. I'm going to guess about 2006. But these are really cool figures. Um, I don't like the film that much. I know it's one of those films that's got quite, you know, it's, got, it's got a cult following. Uh, but I watched it. I didn't think too much of it. It was okay, I thought. But it wasn't, it wasn't absolutely amazing. So we've got the two sets here. We've got Arthur with Marvin. And then we've got Jelts and Zaphod. Um, there is another pack which includes Quals and I don't know who it includes. I'm trying to work it out because there's only five figures in the range. And I did them in six inch scale and I did them in three inch scale in the double pack. So I don't know who the other character comes with in the double pack. Maybe it comes with the other one again, duplicate, I don't know. But I do know that the one with Marvin is quite a rare set. Um, the one with Marvin is roughly about 50 quid. The other two packs are like, you know, 10 quid if that. Uh, but the one with Marvin, very cool. I've never had this one before. I've had all of the other figures, but I've had the the six inch figures, as you can see on the back. And I've had those many, many, many times. Not recently, but I used to get them quite often. Really nice figures. And I've had the 10 inch Marvin a few times before. And funnily enough, the, the six inch Marvin... It's worth more than the 10 inch one for some reason. I don't know why. When I've had the 6 inch one before, it's an easy £125 figure. But the 10 inch one is like 75 I, I really don't know why because it's, it's a better display piece really if you if you like the film. But uh, but there you go. He he doesn't look like they've painted the pupils on. You're not going to be able to see it because it's gone all fuzzy. But they haven't painted his pupils on for whatever reason. Bloody Martin Freeman there. So yeah. Nice little figures. It's sort of as I said already, it's um, it's it's one of those ranges which it's not something people are after. I mean, if you go to a toy fair, a convention, people are always after Transformers. A lot of the dealers selling, if they sell figures, are going to have a few Transformers. I like to have the more obscure stuff, which, you know, it's the sort of stuff which people come along and go, bloody hell, I didn't know they made figures from Hitchhike because I died of the galaxy. I don't want to buy it, but I didn't know they made it. That's cool. Uh, so, you know, it's the sort of stuff I like to have around, so they're very cool to have these, you know, they can be slow sellers, but um, but it's the more obscure ranges which, which catch my eye a little more than the more standard stuff. So, uh, anyway, there we go, it's almost 30 minutes long, I've been rambling for, hopefully, oh, we've got one more item. I thought I'd ended it on a high note there, but then we're taking it back around to an absolute piece of garbage. Uh, this is a UV Funky, this, uh, is that the final bit? Yeah. UB Funky, this is the last bit. Um, this was like a series made by Radica, uh, who you might be familiar with. They made the 20 Questions game, so it's like a little LCD game, and it's like, oh, what colour is the item you're thinking of? And you're thinking, oh, it's multicolour, because I'm thinking of garbage. Uh, they made those, but they also made these UB Funkies. You bought like this big one, and you could plug these, and they all had their own individual game. Uh, quite obscure range of figures. They aren't worth very much money, no one really collects them, but I imagine they're quite hard to find in the packet. I only know about these because um, one of my friends back in the day won a competition and he won the main plug-in thing, like the, this big one, and like a whole load of the little characters. So um, I played it a few times and it was uh, absolute rubbish, it was really not very good. It's no wonder why they didn't take off because they're crap. But uh, there's a sealed one, you'd be funky. So there you go, that's the entire, uh, that's, that's it, that's the full bundle as far as I'm aware, all of it, yeah, that's all of it. So there you go, thank you very much for watching this video, I said already, nice size, so really happy to get it started, it really, yeah, really didn't cost too much money, it was, it was a bloody bargain. Um, beer review, I'm not, again, I'm not going to give it a review, like, fully, I, I'm no good at reviewing these, because I don't have anything to say about it other than it's nice, it's more just an accessory for the video, it's just something I can consume while I'm filming it, but, uh, Very, very tasty. I'm surprised actually, because I'm not usually a big fan of the the more fruity beverages, you know, like the uh, uh, the cherry cider. Not my thing really, but but this this tastes really good. It's very, really, very good. So uh, there you go. Go and check it out if you want to. Um, so there, there you go. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. We'll be back soon with another another uh, unboxing video. I have got a box of figures on the way. 
which I'm beyond excited to be cracking open because there's some absolute belters in it. So I'll probably leave that. I probably will actually, you know, in that video, I'll, I'll have the box here. I'll whoosh, crack it open and we'll unbox it live because there's only a couple of bits in it, but there's some good stuff. So uh, we'll see you on that. We'll see you on the, see you on the flip side. 30 minutes long. I was hoping this was only going to be 10 minutes, but obviously that's gone out the window. Uh, so we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.